what I will talk about today is um, what is currently a first draft of the first um, uh, sustainability report for the Clay Brick Association. Um, so I'd like you to view the slides that I'm giving here not as a presentation in which I try to transfer information to you, but rather as a, a set of prompts um, to, to get information from you. Look has passed out and I see it's being circulated a, a questionnaire. Um, and the, the idea of the questionnaire is for you to, uh, when we go through these slides, um, there are certain questions relating to the content of the slides that says, is this important to you? Um, what would you like to say to the world out there with respect to the sustainability of the, the clay brick industry in South Africa? Um, so what we've tried to do is to come up with fairly simple questions that will allow us to, um, to, to prioritize what goes into, into the first report. <coughs> Um, but what I'd also like to ask you is, if anything comes to mind, turn the page around and make notes at the back. If there's anything that you think is important, um, use that to, to, to give us feedback when we finalize. We, we need to finalize this report very shortly after this meeting. Um, but um, you use the opportunity to, to give us feedback and to say this and this is important and we think this must go into the report um, and things like that. And then the idea is that after this presentation, to just make sure that all the, um, the completed questionnaires goes back to Luca, um, and that um, uh, we can then get that feedback into the finalization of the report. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you about um, is, is firstly sustainability defined, just say what it is, um, the context of sustainability reporting, um, and then the bulk of the the discussion will go around the point where I suspect this thing may even have a point. Is that a point? Uh, yeah. Yes, it's the second button down. It has, I think it's a red dot. I'm not going to take chances and press the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we talk about the key performance indicators, that's where the bulk of the discussion lies. And that's where we need input. And the impact of that is that it only becomes valuable if there's data. And, and I'll show you what data we've got and what data we should. Um, and in saying that this is important or this is not important, just remember that if you say this is important, eventually it will require of the members of the industry to come up with some way to make sure that we can generate data, that we can capture the data and get the data back to some central point for future reports. Then we'll um, just mention some case studies. Um, in the first report, because We've got certain data challenges still. We try and put quite a big, big emphasis on storytelling rather than in numbers telling. Um, we make some recommendations and then right at the end, um, we've been asked to also try and come up with a vision statement. Um, but we don't know the industry that intimately, as I said, we came, we came involved in this program fairly late. Um, so that will really just be a a brainstorming session. Sustainable development, there's a lot of stuff there, but at the end of the day, irrespective of what all the clever people say, sustainable development for me personally is I've got children. And our generation is the first generation that has taken this planet to the maximum of what it can bear. So, if we keep on living like we are, where our parents, the generations before us, have been putting money into the planetary bank account, our generation is depleting that savings account. And we're going to leave our children with nothing if we continue working like we are. Um, so the essence of it is that we need to understand that we've pushed up against the limits of what the planet can bear. We need to understand it, we need to know how to step back and go from actually depleting our savings account to actually putting back uh, into our savings account. The little bit I've gotten to know about the clay brick industry lately 
is I got to understand that there's a lot of family businesses in this industry. Um, there's a lot of businesses in this industry that you've got more than one generation involved in the business. And I think from that perspective, sustainability should be important for this industry. So, um, yeah, uh, totally ignored what's written there. You can read it if you want, but that is just, I think, the essence of sustainable development. The context of reporting um, is um, in, in, corporate, in the corporate world today, globally, um, the King reports on corporate governance has become very important. It's a South African export product that's gone worldwide. Um, Mervyn King, who is the um, guy from King, came up with this concept. Or maybe he didn't come up with it, but he's um, at least made it, um, uh, took it into the mainstream, the concept of triple bottom line that people were referred to as well. Um, it is to make sure that we don't measure only the money at the end of the day, we measure the money, the impact that we've got on society and the impact that we've got on our environment. Um, sustainability reporting drives change. The reality assessments assist in achieving stakeholder by and stimulate collective actions in pursuit of common goals and minimizes the impacts of the value chain. Now we saw just a bit earlier the old concept of cradle to gate and eventually cradle to, to grave. Um, and all of those things come into the sustainability issues. Sustainability reporting as a strategic tool is used to manage risks and opportunities for the business. So we're looking at the creating a tool that will provide information that you can use to ensure that your business is going to be sustainable over the long term. Um, just, just very briefly here, we look at the bigger impact, and this relates very closely to the, the impact, uh, to, to, to the notion of a, looking at the full life cycle. Um, it also looks at the notion of the triple bottom line, where you go from your manufacturing through your value chain, through the communities that you live in, all the way, and then you look at the natural environment at the end of the day. So, now we get to the, to the crux of it. Um, in order to be able to report what happens in sustainability, we have to come up with performance indicators, or key performance indicators. Um, because that's the data that we collect, that's the data that we report. Um, and because this is the first report, we needed to try and figure out what key performance indicators we are going to use. So we took the easy way out. We made a list of everything we could think of. Um, they sit in nine categories. We've got energy, greenhouse gas emissions, air pollution, water, waste, materials, biodiversity, socioeconomic sustainability, and continual improvement. Um, there's some data sources that we've used, but the purpose of the next a couple of slides is really to step you through all of them to show you what we've got, what we don't have, and then while we're busy, to have you look at the questionnaires that we've dished out and say, yeah, this is important. Even though there's no data, we think that the effort should be made in this area. Or to say that, you know what, it's easy to get the data, but on the other hand, it's not important. So we shouldn't maybe focus on that so much. To allow us to prioritize, because on day one you can't do everything. But maybe 10 years from now you want to do everything. But what do we need to do today? And then the, the purpose of these discussions is to, to really see if we can get to that. So if we look at the first one, we look at energy. Um, <coughs> What we've got, the way we've structured it is to look at, first of all, at the sustainability principle, then we look at the objective, and then out of that we say, what indicator can we use to judge the performance? In other words, what's the key performance indicator of KPI? And then on some of the slides where we do have data, we've got a couple of, of columns where we say, this is the data that we've actually got already, to give you an indication of what has been coming up. So principles on energy, we looked at energy efficiency, we looked at alternative energy sources, and we looked at energy management systems. On energy efficiency, 
the concept of energy efficiency is to either use less energy to do what I do, or to produce more with the same amount of energy without increasing the energy, any one of the two. So we measure it in specific energy consumption of direct fuels, metered electricity per brick, and the unit we've been using here is megajoules of energy per kilogram of brick. We've got three data sets at the moment. We, the life cycle assessment in 2013 quoted 3.4 megajoules per kilogram. You will see that value is quite a bit higher than the subsequent values, but that's because it includes the cradle to gate life cycle. Um, it doesn't have, it's actually not a full life cycle. Um, but then um, the other data, I think, is just for your, your actual manufacturing. So you can see it's been, there's been a slight reduction. Um, the next one is alternative energy sources. The thing is the what energy sources is it, can you use that's not um, conventional, that's not coal? So there is one case study, for instance, where people are using tires to produce energy, um, other forms of waste, what can you do? Um, and with the key performance indicator we looked at there is the provision of information and the use of alternative energy sources by members, that's percentage of total fuel. And in 2015, the data that we've got indicates that there is a 13% and it came down to 12%. I must emphasize that that is just the data that we've got. You may find that only the guys who use alternative fuels actually report it. Um, which means that that figure may be significantly less. Or the figure may also be significantly higher. We don't know that yet. Um, and, and that's one of the dilemmas that we see. And then what is very important is to have a formalized energy management plan in your operation. Um, and to have an indicator for the industry as a whole, what percentage of the members of the association actually does have a formal energy management plan? And we can spend an hour talking about the benefits of a formal management, energy management plan, but at the end of the day, it's that old thing that what you can't measure, you can't manage. What you don't manage, um, somebody once said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up somewhere else. <laughs> so, if you don't manage your energy, you can end up anywhere. Um, so, so, one of the things that we need to consider, or what you need to consider, and try to indicate on the, um, on the questionnaires, if you, if you want to do that, is, do you think it's important that there should be a sustainability report of the industry that goes up that says, yes, the industry is taking energy management serious, or yes, you don't really have to bother. Next one, greenhouse gas emissions. At the moment, that's very, very topical um, because um, there's a lot of new regulation and legislation coming in the space, um, and there's a likelihood that it may even cost some of the people in this room some money next year if the carbon tax does come in. Um, so um, it is important at the moment. The sustainability principles we looked at here was greenhouse gas emissions production, and then that's in the, I mean, greenhouse gas emissions in the production stage, and then we also looked at the upstream transport, basically because here we looked only at your cradle to gate. Um, the key performance indicator is direct and energy indirect carbon dioxide equivalent emissions per kilogram of brick. Now, direct emissions are the emissions that is emitted from your site. Energy indirect emissions are emissions, that, emissions generated in the production of the energy you use. Is, for instance, if you buy electricity from ESCOM, ESCOM emits about one kilogram of CO2 for every kilowatt hour that you buy. That would go into energy indirect emissions. So the value we've got is um, in the life cycle assessment 2013, we've got 0.27 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of brick. Um, it went up to 0.33 and then came down to 0.30. Um, but then there's a qualification down at the bottom that the values may be adjusted following further analysis. 
um, and then in the upstream transport, again, that's something that we need to decide whether we can put it in. Um, the key performance indicator is the provision of the amount of fuel that you use, because from the fuel we can calculate the, um, the emissions directly, and at the moment we've got no aggregate data for the industry. So the question is, do we need to come up with, do we need to measure it? Does it, do the people think that it's important to actually do this? Air pollution, the principles we looked at was um, dust fallout from production um, and air pollution in production. Um, and here we've got no data, so you'll see that the, the columns in the table that talks about data is not there. And this is where we start looking at options now. So for the dust fallout, the two options we've got is concentration of dust levels. Um, measured in milligram per square meter per day on the 30 day average. And option two was much, much simpler. So option one is data driven. It says yes, we need data. Option two basically says what percentage of the facilities in the industry is compliant with the legal requirement. So option two is much easier. Um, it's my call. For the first couple of years I would go for option two and then maybe later um, move on to a more data intensive one. Um, but those are the options we've got. Um, for the second um, principle, we've got exactly the same two options. The first one is data driven. We need to collect the data, do we need to have actual numbers, or are we going to say um, overall this is the percentage of the industry that's compliant? Uh, next indicator is water. Um, here we looked at two sources of water. We looked at the municipal water and we looked at other water supplies. I know that a lot of people take water from boreholes. Some people take water out of the quarries. Um, so the question is, how much water do you use um, for the product that you manufacture from those two sources? Is this important? Should we have it in the sustainability report? Personally, I think that this one is important um, because water is a big issue. I think. Nico is saying I'm talking too much. Uh, waste. Um, yeah, I think it's important to, to, to understand that the waste is not um, the production waste that you recycle back into the business, but we focus on general waste minimization and hazardous waste. Um, it's really about the amount that you produce. Hazardous waste refers to things like lube oils and things like that that come out of the operation. How do you work to minimize that. Uh, materials, the focus here is on alternative materials. I know that there's quite a lot of operations that's looking at bringing all types of what's classified in other industries as waste materials, going back to the circular economy that was mentioned earlier, and looking at this whole concept of an um, ecosystem of industries where what is discarded by the one industry is used as a raw material by the other industry. So to be able to focus and to say that, um, yes, we can take what other people discard as waste and use it in our um, process as, um, as input material, and then to focus on packaging. Um, I know that there is widely ranging practices in packaging uh, throughout the country. Um, certain regions tend to, or seem to tend to be focusing on, on certain um, packaging methods. Can you minimize your packaging material? Can you um, improve the recycling and the reuse of the packaging material? What do you do there? Um, biodiversity. Here are the key performance indicator that we came up with is simply to say what percentage of the members in this industry do have environmental management plans and implement it. Um, this is a very difficult thing to measure. It can be very, become very complex in the idea in the beginning is to keep it very, very, very simple. Socioeconomic stability, uh, I mean the sustainability. Um, here we look at, oh, I see this is not the, the very final version. The final version, we actually, the, the word repercussions isn't, um, I think, the right word here, so we change it to impacts. So please read impacts there. Um, socioeconomic impacts of the operation, here we talk about that uh, four jobs per million 
BRICS, um, and we talk about employment, um, and we talk about employment equity, in other words, social transformation, and the contribution that the industry makes towards social contribution. Um, and then the last one is continual improvement. This is not classic standard um, sustainability. Um, but we fundamentally believe that anything you do today, it's worth trying to do it better tomorrow. So do you build a system of continual improvement into, into your sustainability effort? Um, are you going to do it better every year? Uh, so the focus here is on data collection, um, to be able to say, yes, the industry is progressing every year with collecting better data, more data, more accurate data, uh, it's on environmental management, um, what percentage of the industry is really focused on environmental management, and then lastly on quality management. Quality management is very broad, um, and it also um, impacts on the final quality quality of the product you, you deliver, but the focus, the focus here is more on the impact that that quality management that will have on your, on your sustainable, sustainability and sustainable development. Okay, so very brief slide on the case studies. Um, so what we've got in the current draft report, as I said, because the report is fairly data poor, we try to lean more, to, more towards telling good stories and presenting lots of data. And there's a lot of good stories to tell. So feedback that we got out of the industry summarized here. If any of you have got interesting case studies, please just make a note. Um, I think the last question on the questionnaire is, do you have a case study? And then we'll contact you and get the story. Um, what we've got at the moment is energy efficiency as a burner replacement at Angola Bricks. During the ice gas emissions, um, we, um, know about the projects at Corobrick and also the fire recycling initiative at Longcliff. Air pollution, there we speak a little bit about the LCA. Um, water, we looked at rainwater rain harvesting at Claytal. Waste, um, we looked at the use of condemned juice. I wasn't quite sure what condemned juice is. But, um, <laughs> from from Um Materials, um, Putting holes in the bricks at pick up brick, biodiversity, um, we looked at furrow brick, uh, socioeconomic sustainability, um, Makana bricks in Grandstown and the Polar Bricks initiatives, and continual improvement is the sustainability and energy efficiency pledge by members of the association. So, again, um, anybody who's got good stories to tell, please let us know. Um, then um, we did a bit of a SWOT analysis. Uh, Nico, are we still good for time because you... Uh, two minutes. <laughs> two minutes, okay. Uh, the reason I asked this, this slide looks like what it was, but... Um, so, so I don't think we must go in detail about this, but basically um, what we did, I'm uh, just going back to the previous slide, most of you will know the concept of a SWOT analysis, um, where you basically look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, so we, we sat down and we had a look within the within the sustainability space, um, what impacts on the Claybrick Association and the Claybrick industry. In other words, what are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats within the industry? Um, but I don't think we should go through this slide now. This could take us, uh, could take us some time. Um, recommendations, um, first of all, the develop monitoring and evaluation framework for sustainable development reporting, including data collection and data analysis framework for the next report. So at the moment, um, right in the beginning, um, one of the slides I have showed that we took most of the data that we've got from the LCA studies uh, and the industry surveys. Um, we also looked at the websites. Um, a couple of the companies in the industry have got uh, sustainability reports on the website, so we looked at that. Um, and then framework has also got to look at communication and engagement framework. In other words, once you've got this information, what do you do with it? Do you use it to further enhance the image of the industry? Do you use it to influence the regulators to say, for instance, Claybrick is so good, we should not be paying carbon tax. 
reporting on greenhouse gas emissions and <coughs> carbon tax. Um, what do you do? How do you communicate the information? How do you engage on the basis thereof? And then the documenting and archiving framework. Then public association strategies for all, for some of the following categories. Um, air pollution, water, waste, materials, biodiversity, and socio-economic sustainability. Um, on, on the strategy, I think you've already got the energy strategy and we've drafted a um, climate change and greenhouse gas strategy. Um, so we can look at that. Uh, this is definitely not a, the last version. Because <laughs> I asked the people to take out the word blocks. Because I thought maybe if I talk to the brick people, the word block will not go down the well. <laughs> so, so we actually came up with something else there. But, um, we, we sat down and we had about 10 different um, vision statements. So please don't stone me because I have the word blocks. Um, but the, the idea is to, 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 to get people to say, if we need to come up with a vision statement for the Clavic Association, we need ideas. Um, uh, we, um, so anybody who's got any any suggestions, please, please talk to us. Um, just where we are at the moment is we're sitting right over here. Um, so by the middle of June, really, we need to complete this report. Um, so if there's any more information coming out of this meeting, uh, we've got a very short time frame to turn it around and get it into a final report. We have the first sustainability report for the Library Association completed. Thank you for your time.